All right, good morning. I'm here uh, at Rinker Rock Creek Ranch with Eric Winford, who is the Associate Director of the Rangeland Center at the University of Idaho. And we are uh, up Guy Canyon here at a stretch of Guy Creek. And uh, there's uh, some interest in, in uh, using some beaver dam analog structures to try to do some stream restoration here. And so I just wanted to chat a little bit with Eric about the, the BDAs, the beaver dam analogs, and uh, uh, what they hope to accomplish uh, with putting some structures in uh, a stream like this, and also then what are the indicators that they might be monitoring for that and the methods that they, they'll be using to do that. So Eric, do you wanna just kinda orient us to this stream and tell us sort of like what you're seeing here and, um, and maybe a little bit of uh, what you think the restoration potential is for this. Yeah, so this is a, a tributary to Rock Creek. Um, it has a little bit of water in it now and um, it does go dry on some years. Um, it will probably go dry this year since we have had very little rain in it. Um, but this stream kind of caught our eye when we were doing a, an, a, an analysis of these streams when we walked through to look at restoration potential because um, when, you, when you're looking at a stream in an arid landscape, you know, thinking about the potential of what it could be is always the first step. And, and here, where we're at right now, um, the, the, the bank is nice and vegetated. So it's stabilized, but if you look, there's a, a bunch of upland plants right next to the bank. Like there's sagebrush right there. Um, there's some sink foil um, right beside the stream bank. Um, and if you look upstream, you see a bunch of aspen in the middle of the stream. And if you look downstream, there's a bunch of aspen in the stream. So, you know, the question is why aren't there aspen like right here? What's keeping this um, from having that same type? Why is there sagebrush right next to this stream? And when we'll go up, we'll see it's pretty well incised. Um, like I'll stand down in the stream like right now and you can see it's already several feet down from where we were standing on the bank there. So when we check this out for restoration potential, we're looking at like, well, what can we bring it to and how can we accomplish that? And our, our hope is because we see aspen around upstream and downstream with some nice uh, uh, species that are uh, facultative wetland uh, sedges and rushes and stuff like that. We're hoping that we can bring this site to that potential. Um, and one of the ways that we could do that is through these beaver dam analogs. And that's, we, we call it, that's a kind of a generic term for this technique of uh, process-based restoration, where you're trying to use the stream's own potential um, to bring it into kind of back to where, it's, where it could be. Um, in this case, what we're thinking about doing is setting up a series of real small check dams, like and we're talking maybe 6 to 12 inches, made of willows and mud and rock and whatever else we can find around here, and basically just back the stream up a little bit um, so that when and during the spring when there's a little more flow and then the stream takes down sediment, those check dams will start accumulating sediment and building the stream back up so it's not as incised. So is the goal here to actually like replicate what beavers would do if they were sort of in this drainage and operating here or is it just to sort of like we're just using that term generically and we're just going to put some structures in the stream so are we are we actually trying to replicate what beavers are doing here yeah in this stream i i think we are trying to replicate what beavers would be doing um now the stream itself is you know there, we've looked for evidence of beavers we haven't seen beavers in this area uh, we don't see any evidence of them not here but they are in the main rock creek yeah. which is not far from here they are in the yeah. main rock creek um and they could potentially come up here if there was enough food source and enough places for them. So in this case, because the, the check dams will, will basically act like little ponds, then uh, that will replicate what beavers do. In other situations, we may want to do something a little bit different um, with, uh, with a different type of structure that's not so much a check dam, but it, it more uh, pushes the flow to one side or another of the stream. Yeah. 
So now we just got some grant funding to help support this work and that has a big monitoring component for that grant. So so what are what are you tracking over time to tell if these uh, these structures that you're putting in place are actually like doing what you hoped that they would do? And uh, yeah, so like what are what are your indicators that you're right. looking at? So there's going to be a couple of ones. We um, are going to be using a, a com components of the multiple ind indicator monitoring methods. Um, so we're going to be establishing uh, a green line. Uh, transect basically just following the edge of the stream where it's uh, the first components of uh, or the first uh, stabilizing perennial vegetation is established and we're going to be um, counting uh, species on those to see how the green line changes and then we're going to also be doing transects uh, line point intercept transects across the, kind of the riparian valley so we can see if there is any subsequent changes in that vegetation as, um, as these check dams uh, accumulate sediment. The idea is that they'll slowly raise the height of the stream and then that will allow more water into the stream banks and then that will help facilitate the change in vegetation. Um, to double check our method that we're also going to put in pisometers, you know, sort of shallow groundwater wells so we can track the height of the groundwater and then hopefully we'll be able to see if we're actually recharging kind of the uh, this meadow area with with water yeah and storing it so that underlying so raising the level of the water would then change the species composition so that cover and composition are the main indicators that you're looking at yeah in, yeah in terms of effect of these things on this kind of larger stream system exactly that's yeah we that's kind of the, the process that we think is going to happen as we raise, as we capture more sediment and we raise the water table, we think the species are going to change. And, and so we're, we're, we're using that, the species change as an indicator of the other things that we hope are going to be happening. Yeah. Um, and then eventually we hope that that's a method that we can uh, deliver to other stakeholders to use um, because it's a little bit easier to do just a line point intercept transect. Yeah, and then and put install, all this hardware like, and yeah, stuff. And install yeah, install a bunch of yeah. pisometers and stuff. Yeah. Now there's a drone component of this too. So one of my grad students, Chaz Jones, is uh, uh, doing a drone aspect of these beaver dam analogs and then looking at from the air, can we measure these changes in green line, which is just the you know where the riparian area ends and then the upland part starts right um, and then also to look at at sort of changes in elevation right uh, of the of the stream so that's an, maybe an additional sort of component that would come in here yeah the so the stream channel geomorphology will we'll take some uh, when we do the transects at the at that site we'll also do kind of a, a cross section of the stream to look at how deep the stream is um, and how wide it is and then we can take those measurements by hand but we're also hoping we can do it by the drone and then that just saves us a lot more time on the back end because yeah. we can do the whole look at the channel morphology of the whole stream rather than just like three just transects. Little segments along it yeah, yeah. totally are you going to do any planting of like like aspens or willows or woody plants in here or is that sort of a like a down the road kind of no we're we're hoping that they'll just move in yeah. as they as the conditions ripen as the the groundwater changes um, we're hoping that they'll just establish themselves uh, you know you can see there are some evidence of, of like uh, there's a carex nebraska down there um, so they're they're here they're just not widely present so yeah our thought is if that well if there's seeds here if there's some rhizomes if they can just start establishing themselves and spreading then we won't have to do the other components of, yeah. of planting. Um, planting has a really tough uh, history too. It's 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 not always successful. So yeah. you can spend a lot of time yep. and money on planting and, and have and zero die on you. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yep. Well, cool. Well, uh, thanks a lot for your time today. It's a great talk, and let's we're gonna walk up the stream and uh, just check out a couple more spots. Um, and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing these structures go in place. Maybe we'll come back and. Uh, 
in a year or so and, and do this again and see how this site's changed. Yeah, so. it'll look really fun in a year or so. Yeah, totally. Thanks, Thanks Eric.